And I do have some exclusive but disturbing video to show our viewers uh, from an airport attack in Saudi Arabia just yesterday. Please turn away if you need to, viewers. Uh, so this is what we have. These calm moments before their attack, you're looking at the arrivals hall, then comes the explosion. Um, uh, Colonel, you say this was caused by a Houthi missile. 26 people were wounded in the incident, no one killed. Uh, when you're talking about whether the, these attacks at sea, even though they're unproven uh, as to who caused them, this image that we're seeing now, is this the biggest attack in, in Saudi Arabia? And, and Nick Robertson, uh, as you look at these pictures as well, how, how much worse are things getting? So, so to answer the question, how much worse are things getting? Um, you know what, the Saudis have presented us with evidence going back uh, well over a year and a half now, <clears throat> is Houthis using Iranian-made ballistic missiles, and they've sent those same pieces of missile to the United Nations. <clears throat> and the United Nations, in its report, has said that uh, the Houthis are getting weaponry from Iran. What the Houthis have been doing, and, and the logic behind their reasons for, for doing this, um, is not fully clear. Um, they've been targeting Saudi airports. They've been targeting um, uh, Riyadh International Airport, again, a big airport. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, the Saudis intercepted uh, Houthi ballistic missiles at the port of Jeddah during the pilgrimage when there was would have been millions of, of people there. There were there was a missile intercepted um, again in the near the airport in Taif further south. So the Houthis have been targeting using these ballistic missiles, Saudi airports. Now, this incident has happened and one has finally hit an airport and injured civilians. This has sort of been an accident, if you will, or an intended accident waiting to happen. Now, um, the precise uh, who makes the missile uh, and then who decides to fire it and, and when and at what target. The who decides and what target appears to be the Houthis. There's certainly an amount of evidence presented that, that these missiles at least owe their construction in part to Iran. So, you know, the, the notion that the Houthis are backed to a degree by Iran is one that the UN supports. Um, but it does create that atmosphere of uncertainty and concern. Um, now, for Saudi citizens, that if they go to one of their international airports, that they could be hit by a missile flying uh, f flying in from Yemen. Um, by any other calculation or statement, one would generally call this, you know, a war that's crossing borders. That's a politically sensitive statement to make inside Saudi Arabia right now. But of course, it drives the political thinking in Saudi, and they see Iran to blame over the border in Yemen for backing the Houthis and destabilizing. The the region. The Saudis put in a huge amount of money to support um, the economy inside uh, inside Yemen, while at the same time bombing the cities there, targeting um, the Houthis. Uh, and and this, this adds to the instability and tension in the region. So if you take that attack on that airport in the past couple of days and that, that attack on those ships today, from a Saudi perspective, mm -hmm. this looks very much like Iran's destabilization. And in a way, that's the international community community may not agree with that assessment, but that's what the Saudi view is, and they're the, they're the significant player in the region right now. Yeah, and questions about how, how, how they react or how nations across the region react and whether restraint is order of the day here. Uh, Nick Robertson, always good to get your analysis. Our senior international diplomatic editor, Nick Robertson in London, thanks so much.